Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you about surfactant and infant respiratory distress syndrome. Note that surfactant is synthesized and secreted by type 2 pneumocytes. As such, pneumocytes differentiation will be going on between 24 to 34 weeks of gestation. So this is the time when there will be differentiation of pneumocytes into type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes and this job will be helped by glucocorticoids. So sufficient glucocorticoids are needed for the differentiation of pneumocytes into type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. Now note that uh, this Pneumocyte figure is given here. So there are two types of pneumocytes mentioned. So there is a type 1 a pneumocyte here and 95% uh, of the pneumocytes so they will be of type 1 pneumocytes lining the alveoli. So that's the function of type 1 pneumocytes. So they simply line the alveoli. Now the type 2 pneumocytes their main function is to synthesize and secrete surfactant. And this surfactant, it will be lining the alveoli as it is shown here, surfactant is lining the alveoli. So by lining the alveoli surfactant, it may, it decreases the surface tension and it basically increases the pressure present in the alveoli. So because of this increase in the pressure and decrease in the surface tension, so overall, so there will be opening of the alveoli. So sufficient surfactant is needed to keep alveoli in open state. Now, this particular surfactant is synthesized and secreted by type 2 pneumocytes, which are around 5% of alveolar cells. 95% is type 1 pneumocytes, 5% is type 2 pneumocytes. Now let's move on to see composition of surfactant. 80% of the surfactant is composed of phospholipid. Within that, the major composition of phospholipid there is dipomethyl phosphatidyl choline, which is also called as dipomethyl phosphatid, uh, dipomethyl lecithin. So dipomethyl phosphatidyl choline or dipomethyl lecithin. So this is the phospholipid, which is the higher composition in surfactant. So 10% of the surfactant contains protein that is surfactant proteins A, B, C and D and rest 10% of the surfactant is composed of neutral lipids and that is cholesterol. So 80% is phospholipid and major phospholipid there is dipomethyl phosphatidyl choline, 10% is protein and 10% is neutral lipid. Now the alveolarization. Alveolarization basically it is increase in the number of alveoli that will be going on. So this alveolarization will be going on 35, pre, 35 weeks of prenatal, prenatal weeks to 35 weeks of postnatal age. Pre, prenatal to postnatal. 35 weeks prenatal to 35 weeks postnatal during this period there will be increase in the number of alveoli so this alveolarization process it needs normal amount of thyroid hormones normal thyroid hormones are needed for this alveolar alveolarization and also sufficient amount of retinoic acid as you might be knowing retinoic acid is a type of vitamin a and this is participating in differentiation, cell growth and differentiation process. Now the thyroid hormones and retinoic acids are important for alveolarization process. So the number of alveoli will be increased during this particular time. So that takes place between 35 weeks of prenatal age to 35 weeks of postnatal age. Now the infant respiratory distress syndrome. So whenever there is a decrease in the surfactant, so note that surfactant it keeps alveoli in open state. So when the surfactant con concentration decreases or the quantity of surfactant decreases, so alveoli simply closes. That's as simple as that. Alveoli, so surfactant keeps alveoli open, 
when the surfactant is less alveoli closes so that is basically collapse of the alveoli so when the alveoli is collapsed so that will lead to difficulty in the inspiration process and baby will so this particular thing will be seen uh, immediate after birth like few hours after birth so baby is struggling to breathe here so that will lead to increase in the respiratory rate tachypnea and apnea so that can lead to increase in the heart rate leading to tachycardia respiratory grunting can be seen inspiratory striders can be seen and baby is struggling to breathe so leading to flaring of the nostrils and that can lead to chest wall retraction overall oxygenation is decreased and that can give rise to cyanosis so tachypnea tachycardia respiratory grunting inspiratory striders flaring of nostrils cyanosis chest wall retraction uh, this is after birth if this is seen so that is usually because of infant respiratory distress syndrome especially in premature babies note that infant respiratory distress syndrome is a, one of the significant cause for mortality and morbidity rates in uh, uh, preterm babies so decrease in the number of gest means the, the as the uh, uh, weeks of gestation decreases as the prematurity or premature birth occurs so the incidence of infant respiratory distress syndrome increases so what else you are going to see in infant respiratory distress syndrome al on, along with the clinical signs and symptoms that i have mentioned in this particular slide you are also going to see a uh, radiological features uh, where there will be collapse of the alveoli which is referred as atelectasis so note that there is uh, a collapse of the alveoli is shown here so you can see the alveoli in this particular portion is totally collapsed and that's because of the alveoli is not opened because of the surface uh, surfactant is decreased another radiological finding that you see here is the ground glass appearance with reticulo granular pattern or the air brancogram is seen in infant respiratory distress syndrome it is because majority of the alveoli they will collapse and there will be and the dead cells alveolar cells which are dying they will accumulate within the collapsed alveoli and that can give rise to hyaline formation hyaline membrane appearance that is why infant respiratory distress syndrome is also referred as hyaline membrane disease and as you can see here so this particular part is shown as like ground glass appearance and there will be retic reticulo granular pattern you can see if you observe closely there will be reticulo granular pattern and that is basically air brancogram so this is one of the radiological feature that you are going to see in infant respiratory distress syndrome let's talk little but little bit of, about uh, treatment of infant respiratory distress syndrome so premature babies so prenatal corticosteroids are given and this will help in di uh, differentiation of pneumocytes into type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes thereby type 2 pneumocytes can synthesize and secrete surfactant sufficiently postnatal surfactant replacement therapy is also done so the combination of prenatal corticosteroids and postnatal surfactant replacement therapy will decrease incidence severity and mortality of irds so this is all about infant respiratory distress syndrome and surfactant so i hope this video has helped you to understand irds little better than before so thanks for watching and see you in my next video